Well, Chip Roy, and I'm here uh, as Congressman, representing myself, but obviously I represent 850,000 Texans, uh, and I'm here in support of HB6. Well, I appreciate it. Uh, I'd just like to say that I think that Chairman Kane uh, should be commended for his commitment to election integrity, but more for his professionalism and integrity uh, in forging ahead to ensure there are legitimate public hearings on this important topic and not a circus of political correctness. The idea that efforts to ensure Texans, indeed all Americans, can trust the election process undergirding our republic is somehow racist or encouraging voter suppression is itself, in my opinion, offensive. Three months ago, I made some news choosing not to object to the acceptance of presidential electors because I believe under the Constitution and adhering to the rule of law, we are obliged to count electors as sent to us by the states, and not simply reject them. I believe we must protect Texas from Congress unilaterally stepping over our right to choose the president. Reasonable people can disagree, but that rule of law is only as good as the belief the people have in it. And it's only as good as the strength of Texas's elections. And let's be clear, fraud is real. It's very real. The New York Times admitted as much in 2012, that bastion of conservatism, the New York Times, error and fraud at issue. Yet votes, quote, yet votes cast by mail are less likely to be counted, more likely to be compromised, and more likely to be contested than those cast in a voting booth, statistics show. Election officials rejected almost 2% of ballots cast by mail, double the rate for in-person voting. The Jimmy Carter, President Jimmy Carter, Democrat, and James Baker, Commission on Federal Election Reform, 2005, quote, Absentee ballots remain the largest source of potential voter fraud. Citizens who vote at home, at nursing homes, at the workplace, or in church are more susceptible to pressure, overt and subtle, or to intimidation. Meanwhile, in my colleagues, the Democrat-led Congress passed H.R. 1, which would badly undermine Texas elections. Let me be very clear. If that is signed into law in the Senate, it will badly undermine Texas elections if it is adopted. It would effectively federalize elections, require expansions of mail-in ballots, limit the use of voter ID, use taxpayer funds for federal candidate elections, and expose private citizen data to doxing and mob attacks. Thus, states across the nation are moving forward to protect our elections to show the contrast with what Congress did that was incorrect, as they should. Georgia passed SB 202, and the governor signed it into law. It has uh, significant and important protections. Iowa passed protections, signed it into law by the governor. Florida is moving strong reforms, dozens of other states. Texas must lead, not follow. Again, I thank the chairman as well as Senator Brian Hughes for their leadership, and HB6 is a great start. Constituents I represent express concern about election fraud and the need for reform across the district, and the support, and they support HB6. The reforms include provisions for improving the maintenance of voter lists by removing deceased voters, defining election watchers, defining and improving security practices on ballot chain of custody, strengthening the safety of mail-in ballots by discouraging improper pressure in the guise of assistance. And I could go down the list. And how on earth are these kinds of provisions controversial? Notably, I would add voter rolls must be clean and strong. I introduced legislation, the Protecting American Voters Act, this week that requires USCIS to provide, without a fee, inquiring states with verification of citizenship status. Citizenship status. Congressman Roy, I, I hate to interrupt. Yep. We've, we've gone over our time. I want to be fair to everybody on this. I'm That's fair. Uh, but, but thank you for joining us uh, and for your service to our, our state and nation. Uh, before I pass the, you to the other witnesses or the other members for questions, yep. I just want to confirm one thing and, and appreciate your service to 850,000 people, but to confirm for our record, yep. you were here testing on your own behalf. I was. Yourself, is that yes, correct? Sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you. That, are there any questions for Congressman Roy? Let me uh, recognize Representative Fierro. Yes, sir. Congressman, thank you for being here. Yes, sir. Thank you for your passion and for representing so many Texans. Um, there was a quote that's being thrown around that there is, it's more likely to be a, a victim of gun violence in, in our great state of Texas than a voter fraud. Do you not think that's a priority for Texans also? Uh, I think these are apples and oranges, but I do believe that we need to protect the law in all respects. So we need to have election reforms and election systems that we can trust. We also need to go after and prosecute people who use weapons and commit crimes, and we should enforce the law and have justice in that case. And I think we should, I think these are uh, fairly clear kind of Texas values. I wish you could co-sign some of my gun bills. Thank you, Congressman. Well, I said go after bad guys who use guns, but yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Representative Fierro. Other members? Yes, Representative Beckley. So our Secretary of State has said this last election was fair and um, we all got elected in 2020. Do you think that this last election in Texas was fair and that we all deserve to be elected? 
Well, I, look, I think that the Secretary of State... Yes or no. I want a yes or no answer. Well, the Secretary of State can speak for, you know, the state and, and speak uh, for him or herself, whoever the Secretary of State may be, and, and under any governor, right? That's their job. Uh, I believe that the elections in Texas are stronger than most other states, uh, but I think they need to be vastly improved. And I think that we've heard testimony here that indicates a lot of concerns with uh, ballot issues, with concerns about ensuring that people's votes are being counted. So do you think that the that all of us should be elected here, sitting here today, that Texas held a fair election and we all deserve to be elected and that there wasn't any fraud? <clears throat> Working to improve elections doesn't mean that you, you go back and have to necessarily question the elections of, of, of those elected in November. We need to improve the elections to ensure that going forward, people have full faith that every vote is counted and that every vote can be relied no, We already upon. just heard that every vote wasn't counted. We just had a lady that said 20% of her mail-in ballots weren't counted. Which raises significant concerns. Yeah, but Look, this bill doesn't address that. Well, a lot of Democrats raised concerns about the 2016 election, presidential election. A lot of Republicans raised concerns about the but 2020 election. We didn't election. cause an insurrection. Excuse me? We didn't cause an insurrection in 2016. Well, uh, there was a whole lot of issues that were excuse being me, raised by Democrats. Excuse me, excuse me, Congressman, Congressman, Sir. and Representative Beckley. Let's do confine our comments to the bill that's, that's in front of us. Again, this is a passionate issue for all of us, and I appreciate that fervor. Uh, but let's let's focus on the bill at hand. I'm not not admonishing you. I just want to make sure we all remember that we need to focus on uh, uh, HB6. So, uh, are there, Ms. Beckley, do you have further questions? Okay, thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Are there any other questions, members of the dais? Chair recognizes Chairman Kane. Congressman Roy, would you say you're, have you been briefed of uh, election issues throughout the country before? Yes, sir. Are you aware of issues occurring, not just in the recent elections, but in the past? Have you been informed of those things? Of course. There, there is fraud in every election, and we work to improve the election every year. We're always trying to improve elections. Okay. Thank you. Uh, and I might add on that one final point um, that I do think that it is critically important that we have support in Washington, and I'm working to do that to ensure that we have citizens voting. And that's why I introduced legislation this week to make sure that DHS will provide that information if asked. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman Kane. Uh, Chair recognizes uh, Representative Busey. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Congressman, yes, sir. thank you, sir, for being here. Um, in your testimony, you talked about rampant voter fraud. Is there any, can you elaborate on that at all? What things you've seen, things you've seen in your race or you've seen in, in, in this state specifically? Well, my testimony, what I discussed was significant findings after significant study that mail-in ballots are fraught with fraud and that we have bipartisan agreement on that. We have New York Times articles on it. We have a, a presidential Jimmy Carter, who's a Democrat, James Baker, hardly a flamethrower Republican, but with a commission that studied it and came to the conclusion that it's twice the rate of fraud. So looking to find ways to improve mail-in ballots, finding ways to improve integrity at the polls ought to be a bipartisan uh, consensus. What I hear in the field, what I hear from my constituents, which I can only convey anecdotally, are serious concerns about what people have observed at polling locations. And we've, of course, hearing a lot of testimony today sure. along those lines. Well, and, and I, I appreciate you pointing out this anecdotal. I'm, I'm looking at a report from the Office of the Attorney General that they gave us, because we've been talking about this yep. for a month now. And since 2015, they've had 16 convictions of voter fraud. And, and when you go back to 2016, we're talking about over 40 million votes cast. And so that equals point zero 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 four four eight percent um uh, i'm sorry that number i gave you is of the 16.9 million registered voters so it'd be a significantly smaller number we don't want any of this but what i'm concerned about is this legislation and what that you're testifying in support of uh will it potentially disenfranchise more voters in the ballot by mail process we're talking about our disabled individuals who now uh take advantage of ballot by mail are now going to have more issues with getting their votes counted as we heard from our clerks who just testified right before you um when we're talking about a number of 16 convictions since 2015 going back from the office of the attorney general how many votes are we willing to give up how many wo votes texas votes are we willing to disenfranchise <laughs> because of these 16 cases, because I think it would be significantly higher. We just heard from our clerks that she has to throw that vote out for an honest mistake if this bill is passed into law. I don't think, I'm sure we all agree, we don't want to throw out any Texas vote for an honest mistake, but that's what this bill would do. 
And we're doing this bill, from what I see in response from the Office of the Attorney General, 16 convictions out of 16.9 million registered voters. Yeah, but understand that with respect to the data from the Office of the Attorney General, there's two factors there. First of all, there are hundreds of cases that involved voter fraud that have been looked at over the last 15 years. I don't have that data in front of me, but I've seen it from the Office of the Attorney General in my time there as first assistant. Hundreds of cases. And, and, and also, importantly, mail-in uh, ballot fraud is virtually impossible to go find. That's the problem. It's virtually impossible to go prove because it happens and you can't go get it and prove it. Why? Because we don't have all the protections in place necessary. We don't have barcodes that match ballots to envelopes. We don't have the kinds of things that you need to be able to go figure it out. That's the problem. We've been trying to do audits all across the country and we can't do it because the ballots are gone or they're already separated and you can't figure out and match it to the voter. That's the problem. That's why so many people are frustrated. Look, integrity, look, have all the, the, the hearings and listen to the stuff. I agree. We don't want anybody's ballot to be, you know, tossed out, and nobody does. No Republican, no Democrat wants that. I agree. But, but what we want to do is ensure that when that ballot is cast, you know for sure that it's the one ballot matching the one person, one person, one vote. And we have serious concerns and reservations about whether that's the case. And that data in the AG's office, go go call them and go dig through that data. There are hundreds of examples of, of uh voter ID. Just because you don't get the prosecution and can't prove it up doesn't mean that there aren't significant fraudulent examples that are there. And I also would like to look deeper into that data No, I appreciate well. you having that opportunity. And and I'll say, we they do talk, you're right, 530 cases. Right. Most of those are indictments. I assume nobody here feels that an indictment equals guilt. Um, but we've got 530 cases that have resulted in 16 uh, you know, people found guilty. And, and I'm just very concerned, as you just said, I agree, we're not trying to throw out fair ballots, but that's what this bill will ultimately do. We heard our clerk say it, so that's why I think we have a lot of work to do before we consider passing this legislation, because if I agree with you, Mr. Congressman, I agree that that's not our intent, but that's what this bill will do. It will throw out Texans. Yeah, well, that's what, when, when I look at the bill, I don't, I don't see that it would actually toss out a ballot vote. I think it actually protects a ballot vote, but that's what these hearings are for, is to make sure you tweak it, make it as good as it can be. I appreciate it. Thank you, Mr. Congressman. Thank you, Mr. Busey. Chair recognizes Chairman Kane. Congressman Roy, when did you work for, with the Attorney General's office? Uh, 2000, let's see, 13, 14, 2015 into 16, about a year and a half. Okay. And your duties there? Uh, First Assistant Attorney General. Do you, when you were there, did they have an election division? We, we've had units there that were focused on election fraud, yeah. Do you happen to remember how many people worked under that division during that time period? I do not. I'd have to go back and look, and I wouldn't want to give inaccurate information, but happy to get it for you. Okay. Was 26, was that during Harvey? Uh, Harvey was 16 17. fall. 17, that was 17. 17. Okay. Were you still there during Harvey? I was not. Okay. My, my understanding is that at that point during Harvey, they actually had no one in that division. Right. Um, you can't find what you don't look for. Is, is well, and importantly to this point, right, you, you get information given to you. And with the, uh, Mr. Busey talked about 530 is the number, and that's the number that I've seen as well. Uh, but getting out and then proving that with, on, with respect to mail-in ballots, this is the whole point. Again, in the, the Carter-Baker Commission, bipartisan, looking at that, really, really difficult to go find it and prove it. But you know when you see it and you see these cases and you find signature mat matches that aren't there and you see numbers that data when you look across the system and you can see that people are voting and the numbers don't match, you know that there's issues going on. This is what we're seeing and we're seeing it across the country. So it, this is what is causing people to not believe in the system of democracy that undergirds our republic. That's the key issue. All right. Thank you, Congressman. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, any other questions from Congressman Roy? The chair recognizes Representative Deton. How are you, sir? Thank, thank you, Chair. Thank you for being here, Congressman Roy. Pleasure. Um, I just wanted, you know, I think we're going to hear a lot more testimony. We've already heard some testimony. We continue to hear stories of voter fraud um, occurring, you know, all over the place. The, the fact that there's only been 16 convictions, does, doesn't that shine a light on the fact that maybe we do need to look at making some corrections to the code to make sure that we're able to stop voter fraud when it occurs? I would certainly think that improving our ability to go uh, investigate and prosecute voter fraud uh, would be a wise thing to do. I certainly think looking at the resources of the Office of Attorney General, I think looking at offices, you know, uh, you know, collaborating with state, local, or in this case, with local governments uh, would be a wise thing to do. Good, good. And I, I tend to agree, and I think the, this bill addresses some of that. So thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you, Representative. Any further questions? Congressman Roy, thank you for being with us here today. Appreciate y'all. Thanks for having me here.